in this task is not only an issue of doing the best that you can, but rather to do what is required. Imagine that Churchill, when the Second World War was at its worst, he will come and say, I, prom I promise you I'll do my best. Well, that was not enough. He promised blood, sweat, and tears. Well, we are in a similar situation. It's not that the region must do whatever it can. It must do what is required, and everybody should do the same. We know that climate change is a massive threat and that the impacts are already happening, hitting vulnerable people, uh, impacting ecosystems, food security. We know actually what the solutions are. We know that renewable energy, energy efficiency, shifting away from fossil fuel, that's pretty clear. Um, but what we don't yet have is the leadership, um, either amongst politicians or business leaders, um, to really forge uh, a way forward. So I think the main barrier in this instance is political will. As long as everybody's silent about this or isn't talking about it much, it's very easy to push it aside because it is a big challenge. So it's really about trying to build these coalitions. Students, a tremendously powerful group of individuals, young people who are out there engaging more. I think it just needs to become much more of a societal debate. And that means understanding what it means for me and for my kids and for my grandkids. We really have to let go of this being an environmental issue. We really have to even let go of this being a climate issue. This is a societal issue. This is about the kind of countries we want. Ultimately, in the ideal world, we would give up this whole framing whereby we are enemies, the North versus the South. We're just not going to agree on anything if we continue down the past of the 20th century. We are in the 21st century, so it has to be an agreement for the 21st century. You know, climate change is going to be affecting all of our countries, uh, all around the world, and some of our countries have more capacity to act, um, some of us are more, more vulnerable, and so with those two factors, in the end, it means that it's an unequal distribution of the effects and that some, some countries uh, and some populations within those countries will suffer disproportionately from the effects of climate change. So I think in the end, that translates into climate change as an issue of justice. Basically, countries have to be convinced that, develop, that climate change policy can help them develop in, in a more sustainable way. Um, in the same way, you know, they, they can reach growth and they can, and they can increase their, their income and pull people out of poverty while at the same time addressing climate change. The big issue in today's society is how we're going to afford the question of climate change. And all of us know that climate change has been produced by the human beings since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. We have been successful in order to improve our standard of living, generally speaking. There is more resources, more material goods, more services. But the big issue is that now we learn. Science told us that uh, unless we do something, the kind of future development has to be different. It's not possible to keep business as usual.
how are we going to be able to combine a more equitable a world where justice is more evenly spread and at the same time we are able to have a sustainable development which means that we are not going to be able to emit in the way that we emit today. The late 20th century was about economic growth. How now the narrative is that we can now to have growth, development, sustainable, decreasing the emissions. I know the narrative about uh, let's mitigate doesn't sound very well, but it's possible to put the other way around. Are we going to be more resilient? Are our societies are going to be more protective to everybody? And this I think is possible to do it. The narratives we've used to talk about climate change up till now have not worked. So telling people about carbon emissions and tons of carbon in the atmosphere, it doesn't do it for anybody, especially not political leaders. It's not something they can tell a story about. So we talked about the need to change the narrative, to put people at the centre of the narrative, to tell a more positive story about opportunity related to climate change.